Hello and welcome back to the Hard West. We are still following the father of Warren uh, in his attempt to somewhat uh, get even with uh, with the devil. He's still trying to lift the curse. And the last time we have uh, looked into how to uh, find clues of uh, getting around. He's now become an opium dealer and a tobacco dealer and uh, uh, yeah, even uh, an alcohol dealer. So definitely a nice little career that he has uh, gotten himself into and on top of it his main profession seems to be undertaker nowadays great we are having three more days of potential uh, food left over by the way i should have hired the guy way way later now that i know how the food mechanic works Iron Globetrotter Station building was a desert, uh, deserted, but a small hut with a mortar and a pestle sign still stood nearby. A novice um, on the wall said a merchant train called Protection was due to arriving this morning. The undertaker waited for a while. The Undertaker got on the train. Protection was a heavily armored vehicle armed with Gatling guns and contingents of guards. It belonged to the mysterious entrepreneur known as the Protector. It was used as a mobile shop for high-value transactions. Jacobson Price ran sales. Ooh. Interesting. So first and foremost, they are interested in opium. I like it. That's good. We can start dealing. Making some good profits here. Oh, nice. Double precision rifle. Allows two shots per turn. Hmm. Not too bad. I like it. Four damage and two shots per turn is pretty good. But I think we're going to skip all of this and just take the money. Let's look at the medic's house. No, we're not taking any healing. Thank you so much. We're going to the abandoned wagon instead. A group uh, found a damaged wagon after investigating Harrington, uh, Harrington determined it had come from the west, but it had been intercepted by people coming from the north. The people then took the person from the wagon and rode it back where it came from. The wagon held several interesting items, but whether it was uh, deteriorated by the minute. A vicious sandstorm looked to be brewing. Let's try to collect everything. Sandstorm hit while po the post still was collecting the items. It took the post several hours uh, to get together again. Ace of Hearts, Dose of Opium, Liquor, Angelic Sphere, sphere and a couple of food po uh, portions. That's actually not too bad. We're getting by. The Angelic Sphere, uh, sphere is pretty good. It's a nice little healing item. We got enough uh, enough food as well, and we got ourselves plus 10 luck, another ace. And every hit cripples the target. That's not too bad, to be honest. So we're now looking at two uh, pairs for the Undertaker. And... We got another jack, which means we're also looking at a triple, um, at a triple here for him as well. That's actually really not too bad. 130 uh, luck. Having high luck is really helpful because also the amount of luck I determined the amount of luck that you regain when someone misses you is based on your maximum luck. So the higher your maximum luck, the more. Uh, luck you will uh, gain back when someone misses you. The tracks led to two ruined buildings on the hill that overlooked the river. Inhuman laughter and howling uh, and howling emanated for the from the compound. 
Harrison scouted ahead, returning to the report that uh, the compound was inhabited by men uh, following the orders of the insane cultists they called the Mad King. Ashmore was here, though dead or alive was anyone's guess. Let's infiltrate the compound. Uh, we have everyone already equipped and let's give it a go. After this fight, I think our wound with Harrington would uh, the become a boom. And the bounty hunter approached the abandoned sawmill. They needed to find Reverend Ashmore, hopefully more alive than dead. They would either stumble into him by chance in one of the buildings or beat the truth out of the Mad King. Okay, so we are supposed to loot the boxes and subdue the Mad King to learn more. And we need to find Ashmore. Well, that's all rather easier said than done. We are swarming out. Gosh, there are dozens of cultists here. Moving in. I mean, all of this here. Wow, that sucks. Ah, that's really a mean way of positioning them because I need to subdue him and then continue subduing him unless we want to raise alarm. Just to just to know if if the uh, if. Uh, Ashmore is there. But before we subdue every, everyone, let's collect. So this is one. Nice. The jinxing aura is really good and probably we should move around the camp to jinx everyone because it's that good. All right, before we go there, let's check all of the other areas. The crate contained much needed food supplies. Okay, so it's the same story here. In order to get anywhere, we need to subdue this guy. Probably if we put ourselves here, we could subdue two of them at the same time. Not 100% sure about it, but it's a chance. But like I said, before we subdue anyone, I would suggest... No, 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 don't... There. Oh, wow. Okay. I was about to say I would suggest before we subdue anyone, um, we wait until we actually uh, get all of, uh, all of our supplies. Moving up here, again, we still need to get to the supplies. There's another spot to get this uh, to these supplies. Gosh, so many guards everywhere.
There is our target, by the way. Can't get through here without subduing him. And then we could barely get the supplies. I think that the supply crates might be indeed completely optional um, in terms of getting them also during the fight. Now our main idea is really to find to find our target. Hmm. Yeah. I guess what worries me a bit is there are so many enemies at the same time. Just splitting up doesn't seem like a very good idea. Hmm. Okay, we could move over here. And then slowly make our way to the supplies there. Yeah, wow. Okay. We needed to subdue this gentleman here anyways. We cannot threaten enemies whilst being seen by others. Okay. I get that. I get that. But we can now subdue him, right? In a rush of lucidity, the Mad King revealed the good reverend's location. There we go. That's... That's his location. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess we can't fight at all of the frontiers at once. Like there's three enemies here. Gosh, so many enemies over here. Yeah. So, where is our fighting spot going to be? Maybe we're taking this side here? And then slowly fight our way through the other areas? I just don't see that we are that we can kill them all at the same time. So, let's gently move out of this area. Keep your hands up. All right, 20 seconds AFK, and then we're going to start the fight real quick.
So, I was thinking we might want to position ourselves in a bit better spot. We probably need to kill all of them in the first instance. <laughs> Moving over here. And very much moving over here. <gasps> All right, stick your hands up. I guess we have one, two, three, four thugs here. Even more over there. We need to get them out of luck, which means he's going to take over subduing the Mad King, whilst we are moving in to drain them out of luck. He has chain kill. Which, if we position him at the right place, we might be able to hit them all. Okay. Stick them up still, buddy. I think that's a very good place for him. He's able to see all four of them, the exception of this guy here. So once all of their luck is drained, he should be fine. Continuing to stick him, uh, stick them up. Yep, there we go. Still have some luck left. <gasps> All right, no more luck left. At least we got the cultist leader. So now that everyone is drained, I was just wondering where we should position ourselves. I would suppose we maybe want to position ourselves here to take out the next group in the other direction. So we're almost there, guys. Bear with me for one more second. But like I used to say, a good setup requires some time. <gasps> so 
So just out of curiosity, we could probably move up to here. Let's see if that drains his luck. Yeah, he's jinxed. Well, that's a good sign. We should move him inside here. Okay, good enough. I think we can give it a go. Let's start by saying thank you. Thank you for waiting all that time. Just to get uh, shot down. Wait a second, he would be in cover, so it's actually a good idea to shoot him now. These guys wouldn't be in cover. He seems to be not in cover as well. Okay, so all of them would be outside of cover. He is in cover, however. Yeah, we need to start with killing him. We can move here. And that's the last turn. Now we can start. We're taking chain, uh, chain kill. And... Let's go. The action just started. Here we go. One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. Quadruple shotgun. Five down. I think we can't shoot twice. We can't. But since we killed everyone here, might as well take more food. All of found. the goods. A blessing indeed. And see what the enemy is doing. I would think that the enemy is going to start approaching us from all of the sides. We just killed the cold leader. So there's another pile, there's another pile, and we need to free Ashmore. Okay. Let's get over here next. Moving. Wait a second. Oh, she's in full cover as well. Interesting. Moving both into this direction. Think that we're actually not going to deal a lot of damage. That's a bit of an issue here. And unless we want to move in with the Undertaker like to here, I know that there are at least two more waiting. That's a pretty bad idea. But what we could do is... No, we actually can't because Ricochet doesn't work that way. Bad. 
if hmm. I'm thinking out loud here we can hit this thing it could hit this thing and it could then hit her that's a long shot in the truest meaning this card here would cover us from this side Like standing here would be semi-dangerous because someone could still flank us but I think it's worth the risk of course well screw it I must say the ricochet ability is probably one of the worst game designs of that game. On paper it looks so good, so absolutely wonderful. In reality it's just so bad. I mean, if it works, you are actually quite happy. But there are just so many obstacles in the way. I find myself repeatedly going back to the golden bullet if available because it's just a stronger skill huh, we can kill this lady probably we should do that of course she has some luck left over hitting the schizophrenic and draining his luck we're standing in an open position with the Undertaker, we need to take care of that. But luckily, she is not moving either. So moving closer means we also have uh, this guy here. How did I shoot it the last time? 74% chance to hit him. Well, that's good enough. Of course. We can shoot through the window. But it's nigh impossible to hit someone. Uh, it's nigh impossible to hit this here. Got another one. These stones here are a bit in the way. Can't move all the way inside. So I guess we're taking the next, be next best option, which is moving to the next full cover. And then focusing on this target. So how did I pull off the one shot that was actually bouncing into this direction? Or is there another... Did I hit this here? I feel like I'm missing something somehow. Hmm. 
Moving on to the other side. Of course, we can't hit this. Interesting. But we could hit this one guy. Alright, one more down. This here should be a flanking position. Yeah. He still had enough luck from his last uh, evasion. So we're putting ourselves into half cover here, just to draw all of the fire. And we're activating dodge to do that. And mainly draining her luck. So the guy in half cover should now take all of the shots. But since he has dodge active, they are probably all going to miss. being able to hit her. Can we hit him? No. Of course not. So moving into here means we're going to flank most of uh, the enemies. Triple defense. Okay, so I think he's going to die uh, just because uh, all of our shots are crippling. We are trying to finish this guy off. Nope. Almost. We got one more round of dodge, so it's okay for us to reload. And there we go. Is she seriously still hunkering there? Not the right call. This year. <laughs> oh no! How's that even possible? I mean, isn't that why they. How's the level designer figuring, like, you know what? I mean, this year looks okay. We, we don't put it here. Uh, we put it, like, literally here. So it could hit targets behind this defense, which is half cover. I. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It is what it is. It's just bullshit. I don't know if there are guys back here, so I am not testing my luck. Instead, we're going into full cover and play it safe. Reloading. Draining her luck before we now move into a flanking position. Oh wow, I haven't seen that one coming. That was great. I need to congratulate the AI. I really haven't seen that one coming. That was pretty awesome.
All right, let's take some healing over time. I mean, I got you. That wasn't bad. The table did not provide any cover. And we instead got pretty well hit. Little thank you for giving us the bullet. No way. Oh my god, how is that not going to hit? So one of the first mods should be repositioning of all of these items and enter more ricochet items because this is just bullshit. Yeah. Next turn we're just going to kill her. She's reloading, that's fine. I can live with that. But guess what? Three shots. Because we don't need ricochet. Moving into a flanking position. We're out of ammunition. Reload and reload. Eighty luck is enough to uh, avoid one shot, regar regardless of. Of the power of the shot. Taking full cover here. Even a shot in, in, uh, in the open is what I meant to say. Reloading the Borgen rifle slowly but surely, just a couple more shots into it. And we're moving on. was a crucial mistake my unattentive friend because with a reload you are going to be dead the third crate was also packed with rations Okay, time to move in, I suppose. Let's 
So, if we were to hit this guy here, that would be a crippling shot. Crippling shot means he's definitely going to take uh, some extra damage. Moving over. Well, we might as well just kill him. I want to get the last uh, pack of rations before this here is over. Good. We got everything. Time to reload the good old rifle. And let's see if we can drain some luck. Or just cripple his defense. That's also absolutely fine. Drain even more luck. And drain even more luck. Next turn he's going to be dead. Moving in. He loses a lot of blood. his saviors a lifetime of prayers the undertaker looked for a way out of there ashmore pointed out i think out a boat uh, the whole chapter downstream. was designed just to free him not to kill everyone but i guess we just decided to instead kill everyone by the way where do we need to run i kind of intuitively thought it would be the south damn it's, exact, it's the exact opposite way. But I guess since everyone's dead, it doesn't really matter. Okay, well, with the exception of the one shot uh, that got me pretty uh, much out of the blue, I did not expect that to, ha uh, to happen. Everything else was uh, moving very much according to plan. I think we had a very strong opening uh, with the chain kill, and the rest here was rather easy. There we go, mission complete. Ghost Town was destroyed and the Undertaker had to leave and find a way to lift the curse uh, that doomed those around him. The boat floated with uh, the current, they were out of danger. Reward Eshmore thanked everyone and asked why they wanted to find him. When the Undertaker told him about his curse, the priest shook his head in embarrassment, replying that he merely had, as all men did, the power to do good. He offered to join the uh, the post to help the search. Yes, please. Reward Eshmore inclined uh, his head with a smile and pointed uh, to a heap of items stocked uh, on the boat. They were almost all his possessions, confiscated by the Mad King's followers. After rummaging through the collection, he produced a masterfully crafted rifle he called the Bone Hand. Eshmore presented it to the Undertaker, a warning that it should be only handled by uh, emissaries of death. Clearly, he believed that Undertaker was one. <laughs> I like it. 
bone hand rifle and holy amulet. All right, guys, let's finish this session by looking at the equipment and then we're calling it an evening. We got, by the way, enough food and also the money supply looks better. Uh, the Undertaker still has his gushing wound. That's okay. And he's now missing a brain part of the school, um, which gives him a bit of movement, extra hit points and extra maximum luck. I like it. Uh, that's from our first injury. We got a new gushing wounds in the last combat, uh, so that's not too bad either. Oh, we got a nice little uh, lucky charm. I think 185 luck is pretty, pretty good. And he has a navy gun. Okay, interesting. We got the bone hand rifle. Six damage, aim 15. That's not bad. Specifically if you do not have a good aim. And it's a six damage rifle, so I guess we take what we can. Uh, what we can get. And there is a holy amulet as well, plus 50 luck. Wow, that is really, really good. I am thinking about giving this to the Undertaker, uh, mainly because with 210 luck he has a lot of options to just simply uh, use his extra shots. Um, we got ourselves a navy gun, that's 5 damage, we shouldn't uh, forget that, it's a good weapon for for Ape, Fleischer. Ape still has this really, really bad movement, so... Yeah, I'm torn between giving him plus 5 uh, to hit or 4 movement. Ape is a pretty bad character. So, shoot all enemies in sequence, all, uh, all enemies inside, that is. I think we're going to give that to our... Uh, to our sniper It's not the worst Specifically since he has such a high aim although by thinking about it. You know what? Let's give it to him He has 185 luck as well and 90 luck for Verage is a lot of luck that you need to uh, that you need to use so I think that's a great option for him Barrage only is good if you can really pull it off and that's what I was worried about, that we can't pull it off. So the last thing before we cl uh, close this session is we're going to go to the Fates Trader. In the evening, everyone's hungry. Everyone needs some sleep. And everyone needs to trade. Gosh, we have this beautiful new rifle for only 80 gold. That's not bad. I mean, we're a bit short on gold. That's our problem. I like the Cannon Cavera. Um, this is such a good all-around weapon. So that's going to be, of course, our go-to weapon. Uh, currently we're short on weapons, really on, on, on quality weapons, that is. So I'm thinking about... The Bonehand Rifle is really good for its price. 80 for a 6 damage weapon with 15 aim. That's not bad. I mean, it, that's really decent. The other stuff is very, very costly. Uh, it's mainly my grudge with it. Well, that would get us down to 17 cash. That's too low. We can't afford that. Thirty-seven is better. You don't need the nail bombs. 
53, yeah, that's even a bit better. Let me dig up the weapons real quick. So if we were to give someone a Cannon Cavera, uh, it would probably replace the 6 shooter. Because it deals 6 damage. And the bone, yar uh, bone hand rifle would probably... Hmm. The shotgun is really bad as well. I mean, that's a really, really bad weapon. The Western rifle, however, is also a really, really bad weapon. So giving him one good weapon actually isn't the worst idea. Gosh, we could use so, man, uh, so much more valuable weapons at this point in the game. Yeah, it is what it is. So, let's trade in the Western Rifle for the Bone uh, Hand Rifle. That's fine. And the Cannon Calvera. You know what? If we take his navy gun, now we're taking a six shooter because the navy gun is better than the six shooter. Although the navy gun doesn't have, oh, the navy gun has fanning. Never mind, the six shooter it is. Really bad weapon. And in terms of a rifle, I mean, we have a couple of really bad weapons, so. Might as well take this. Um, let's adjust our cash because we do not have too much of it. 133 is fair enough. Trading it. Let's equip our guys. So I guess Giving him the Cannon Cadavra is really a good idea. He has a decent aim, good sight, having a lot of luck helps as well. So that's okay, I like it. Giving him the rifle is also not a bad idea because the rifle has 15 aim and he, his aim is just so terrible. And here we do have the Navy Gun, which I think is a better weapon uh, for him anyways. So we kind of have the Remy Borg rifle as a, as a backup weapon. But this here has Fanning, 5 damage, 5 shot of ammunition. That's actually a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent weapon, I would say. Of course, the Cannon uh, Calavera is better. But the next weapons, if we were to get some, are probably uh, better rifles. Bone uh, hand rifle is good, but the actual sniper is better. So, wait a second. We're still at the trader, right? And I know that the trader has the holy musket. Which is kind of the king of all of the rifles. So if we were... Shit, we can't even... We can't even buy that weapon. No. Too expensive. Alright, this is where the session ends, guys. We're going to continue in the next session. If you enjoyed the content, uh, leave a comment and a like down below. Thank you so much and have a great day.